Greetings again. This is Dr. Bill White with the American Orthodox Society, and I want to talk to you a little bit today about opposite ways of using these bonded blocks. Uh, you can use them to actually close the bite dentally, the, or you can open the bite, uh, the height, the, the space, the lower third of the face down here, you can change it as you use these different uh, ways to put the blocks in. So I want to show you that this morning. And uh, there are two cases that you probably, you may have seen the real deep bites, both cases. And let's go ahead and get started on this. I'm going to just kind of zoom through the, and show you the action of these blocks. So here we'll try to get this thing started. Uh, let's see, I want to get that. All right, here's a, a gentleman that uh, now is a good friend of mine. He's an airline, um, you know, tells people where to go with these airplanes coming in. And they have to uh, understand him and. Uh, so we had to change the way we used the blocks uh, in his mouth. And let's show the, the deep bite. He has a terrible deep bite. And in his particular case, uh, we wanted to give him a little more height in here. In other words, we like to drop the chin down a little bit. You know, not too much, but open the bite some. So in these cases, you use the blocks up in the front of the mouth. I'll show that here real close. And here he is. Now this is a deep bite. I mean, you can't even see his lower front teeth. And they're really cocked in like this. So we go in and first, I tried to use a removable appliance and he's an airline traffic uh, director, and so he has to be heard. And he was about to back out of this, and I had a whole deal up in here with a bite plate in the front part of the mouth, and I had to take that out, and we went in with just bonding something up in this portion of the mouth, and had the lower front teeth bite into this right here. And there's a this can present some type of problem. I'll mention that as we go along here. Uh, let's see, you know, all right. There's just some more pictures of that we started. And uh, this is lower bite like that. So here we are in the middle of the treatment. Or not in the middle, we just started the treatment. You can actually put all of this stuff on at one uh, time. Now this is a bonded, I mean a big, uh, you know, regular rectangular arch wire that we put on here. And it's got the uh, loops in it that are like this. And uh, this wire is going up in this fashion. And we pull it down and piggyback it over. Now you notice down in here you've got a, a, a second arch wire in there that's rotating and doing a lot of things to the teeth. But this large wire will be picking these teeth up and taking these teeth down to open this bite. And when you put a edge to edge, you get about a, a good quarter of inch of space in there and he had a tooth removed I believe on this uh, area right there so we we're working with uh, a removed tooth but we just kept the space open and he could have something put back in there later on all right we'll just go through that pretty quick you can see these loops we've covered this in opening bites now this was the upper appliance this is the upper teeth now looking down but he could not speak clearly as an air traffic controller. And so he had to 
be able to be heard and it was bothering his voice so he was going to just back out of this deal and I decided I better change it and, and see if he could use that. So we eliminated this anterior bite. We were biting up here with this and uh, we just took it, uh, took that out that was removable anyway. The lower is the same thing down here. That's just the lower the way we had it. All right, we come back in. This is just a little bit later and we're getting down and we could not, uh, we got this showing where his lower front teeth come up and bite underneath that. And you can see this a block that we bonded up above. You can see this little bit of it there. And we had him biting here and then you, this puts weight on the condyles back here in the back of the uh, your condyles touch and you touch up in the front. So somebody with bad joints, you couldn't do this. Uh, it'd be hard to uh, do that without supporting these teeth back in the back. That's where it takes the load off of that. So it's a little different. Now here is this bite plate. This uh, doesn't amount to much of anything. This is the upper arch down. He, that's where he bites in with his lower front teeth. Bites there and holds this thing open. But that puts pressure up here. Now the load that's opening the bite is comes off of the molars back here. And they have no contact on top of the molar so the motors move to, toward each other. And as they move toward each other, while you're depressing the front teeth here, you're depressing these and these, but these are coming together on this motor. And whenever they come together, you're going to increase the height of the facial structure in here, in this lower third of the face we keep talking about. And so you'll see that that's the way we increase that. If we get somebody that's too low, you know, their chin is too close to their nose to make their face look nice, and you want to open that up, you can put the bonded blocks, uh, block up here, and they bite, and then that same force on the motors is pushing the teeth up but it pushes the molar tooth down, the upper one, and the lower one, and raise it up, and the distance it moves is how much you're going to increase. Actually, if you open, if you change this, it'll be greater in the front part of the mouth. All right, well, let's go ahead and get on the, this. Now, this is the lower, it's get straightened out as we open the bite, it's got plenty of room and we are able to lower teeth there. And we're using the upper uh, bite plate. Now that way he can talk and he can speak and the pilots can understand him. So here we're going and we get his bite up there and we use some plastoelastics to pull that together and we'll level him up. and. He's about ready to come out of these now, and so we'll go to the next case. Now that's where we we just open this bite now by having bite plates up here in this the mouth, and that opens it up, and it increases the height of the facial structure there. So let's see. Now that we come in and finish him up and bond it. Some stuff, these were the retainers that he wore. He had to wear a retainer with the bottom one. He had a tooth out here. So we keep this gap like it was when it started and he can have an implant or a bridge or whatever. It was a partial denture if he wanted it. And then this is the upper retainer with a bite plate 
and you always put a bite plate in it. This is the one he'll wear for a long time. When he gets this fixed, he can have this cut out, and then he probably won't wear it very much. But this one right here, he'll need to wear for a long time because the bite really settles in at that open position. And a lot of times that's a lifetime thing. Or if this is the upper and he bites down in this groove right across here and his lower teeth stay in this position. All right. Now here is another young man who has, uh, he's actually got a little more vertical than he had, needs to have. And so we're going to bond these blocks on the back side, and that helps you open the bite diddly and not open it skeletally. And so I'll show you his case right quick. Now, he is class two there, and he is a deep bite. I didn't have any pictures of him right at the first, or I took some, but I don't have them to show you. Uh, but I'll show you his models, how deep his bite was. It is a real deep bite, and it's uh, the way these teeth close back here. He has to close his jaw back, and so a lot of times and where somebody has their jaw locked in like that, you'll have a TMJ problem, but he didn't, so we'll go ahead and run through his case right quick. Uh, and so we use just a regular bracket on him, and there the uh, actually the intruding wires we have. This wire right here is is actually made to go here, and we bring it up and hook it there. Now it's these push down on this part of the mouth, it raises this part up. You have just as much force going up over here as you have going down over in this part. And it has to be exactly the same. But you chew on these molars so that to not open the bite skeletally while we intrude the teeth. If you just put this on here, these teeth uh, like we did on the other guy, you put a bonded block up here, then the force that pushes these down raises the molars on the lower and lowers them on the upper, and whatever these come together, it'll be greater out here in front, or you will increase the height of this person's face. So that's the lower third of it. So you don't want to do that. You know, that. If you get it too high, it just looks bad, you know. And you can always open up. And if you get somebody that's already high to start with, and you need to open it, you don't want to do anything So you got these blocks in the back side. And this depresses these lower teeth. I mean, these molar teeth, it'll depress them and you can get the bite to go down some and do it. That's uh, pretty difficult to do. So if you get a high angle case, you do not do any orthodontics without something to put pressure on it. And if you think this block right in here doesn't put pressure up here, just put one on yourself and you just make it fairly thin and see, you will bite the heck out of it, you know, and you push. So you get extra muscle force in this area of the mouth to keep this down while you raise the teeth. And that's why any of these things, if they hook on the six-year motors work. Now that little gadget they've got coming out here that you put a class two elastic on it, and the molar just doesn't move much, and it'll bring the uh, lower jaw forward on that. 
So this is something we need to understand thoroughly. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and, and there are these two intruding wires and you can see the block in that case. That picture's bad there. And the, as you open the bite, you'll have room for the teeth. They just kind of spread out a little bit. And these teeth will line up out here. It'll have a greater length there to do that with. So here we go. And we put this on, and that's the intruding wire. It can be round. We prefer a rectangular, but it comes out. This goes back, you see, and it goes around and around, and it goes in here. But now this would head off this way when you put that in. So you pick it up so it's pushing down on the front part out here and it pushes this up, but this block that's in here biting, it will not raise that block up. In other words, uh, you're going to chew on that and it helps come out and it, this puts downward force from the muscles on it. As you pull this jaw together, it pushes this down and it pushes upwards up, and so you can actually lower the vertical, you reduce the vertical height of the faces here by wearing these blocks. And uh, people chew on them very hard. Now here we go. All right. Now that's back in the class one and we go ahead and finish this guy out. And we've opened the bite and corrected the class two problem. And uh, that was, well, here's where he, we have him at this end, when we finish this. Uh, and this, the left side of the mouth was class one, the right side was class two. And so that's still there. And we made him a retainer and a bite plate to hold that in place. And uh, <clears throat> here is his bite when we started, and there's the material that we used to open the bite with opening the dental bite, but actually close the skeletal bite slightly while you uh, do that. And that's what we use as the blocks in the back part of the mouth to close the bite. Here's this man that we want to add to it. So we put the bright blocks in the front part of the mouth. And as he bites down, it has pressure here and pressure on the joints back here. But the motor teeth tend to erupt down as you bring the anterior up. And these will erupt up as you bring these teeth down. I hope everybody understands that. And if you mess with high angle cases, you better understand it, because you can mess them up. And so don't tackle them until you understand what's going on in here. So I don't mean to fuss at you. But this guy had the tight, I um, mean, closed bite. I mean, you can even see the lower front teeth. Now this, if you have the closed bite, you cannot slide your jaw from side to side, which is the best way to chew like this. Or you slip your jaw that way. You can only close this way. Now this is the way a dog bites. If you watch a dog, they don't chew much of anything. They just chop it up a little bit and swallow it. You know, they bite this way. But you watch a cow or something that uses grass and stuff like that, they will actually grind their teeth back and forth from side to side. And you cannot do the grinding when you've got the deep beat like that. They run into each other. 
So let's see. All right, here's what we used to open his bite, and we put the bite plate right up in front, and the other young man, we used it in the back. And here we open or increase the vertical dimension of the lower third. In the young man, we decrease the vertical dimension of the uh, lower third of the face. So that's the difference. And you need to understand that if you mess with high-angle cases. And there that bite plate is, and that puts the load on that. Now I appreciate you watching, and I uh, hope you gain something from this. And I hope we can increase the uh, really quality orthodontics that's done everywhere. Uh, if you can take these videos and know them, then you can do that. So thanks again for watching, and I'm going to close this out and say goodbye, and I hope to see you again now, and I'm going to close. Stop.